All it takes is one fragrance from a brand to open up my curiosity and the floodgates of my wallet just start leaking out. I purchased Bath & Body Works coffee and whiskey. Love this shit. I figured, yo, for 30 some odd dollars, such a nice cheapie that really won't make it onto some lists, like, why not just go back to Bath & Body Works and buy more? Let's go check these joints out. Let's roll my motherfucking music so we can check out my mini haul from Bath & Body Works and see if these are any good. I'm kind of a big Bless you morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. This your boy. See to you, to be today. I love doing videos when my throat is a little raspy and a little itchy because I actually sound like a man. So I purchased three fragrances from Bath & Body Works, the floodgate. So here we go. The three fragrances that I have not smelled any of is Mineral and Sea Salt, Noir, and Brandy and Leather. And obviously I'm most excited about this one because I have symptoms of an alcoholic, just not the motivation. So since Leather and Brandy is the one that I'm hype about, I'm gonna start off with the one I'm least hype about. I bought these off the Bath & Body Works website. They were all in that same 30 some odd dollar space. So we'll start off with Mineral and Sea Salt Cologne. And the back says fresh fragrance with a hint of crispness inspired by watery mineral springs and salty air. And it's important to note, this was not tested on animals. That's what the box says. They did test it on animals. Just kidding. All right, here's the presentation for mineral and sea salt. So I'm already gonna assume that it's a very basic -y aquatic. I'm gonna throw it in the ringer and say it's a Bulgari Aqua Amara kind of shit. Why? Because of the name and the color of the juice. That's just my general assumption, right? So, oh God, I remember that these little caps fucking solid. All right, so let's try it out. If anything, I'll look up the notes if it seems anything interesting to look up the notes, but we shall see, right? Mineral and sea salt. Let's see how this possible boring freshie comes out. It's not too bad. It started off a little sour. You do get that mineralic, slightly metallic saltiness very aquatic, very fresh, very blue. There's also a little fruitiness in here. And I think they're trying to go for something like, what's the fruit that I'm thinking of? It's not It's not just your traditional fruit. I feel like they're trying to go like exotic fruitish kind of vibe. A bit of musk. You get that salty dryness. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not even bad. It's pretty good, actually. It feels like a designerish blue aquatic kind of type of fragrance. I mean, it's actually not too bad. I mean, this shit ain't jaw dropping or like, oh my god, I just jizzed them. It's not that, but it's not bad. All right, I'll look up notes. It's so basic, they don't even break down the note. They're like mineral notes and salty. <laughs> they just don't give a fuck. So for me, there's some sort of exotic kind of fruit note in here. I don't know if it's like a uh, star fruit. I get like a salty. Aquatic, blue, star, star fruit, mineralic. I do get that mineralic kind of silver, wet, nickelish vibe note. This really isn't bad on a scale of one to 10 as far as fresh is concerned. Granted, don't know performance or sillage or nothing like that. Uh, I give it a six. It's actually not bad. For 30 some odd dollars, maybe a 6.1. Next one. All right, the next one is Noir. Noir, dark, sexy, mass appeal. Again, still with that, that popular DNA. Here's the Noir bottle. Nice, smooth, cool looking. Let's get into the scent profile. Probably another one that I won't get notes off of either, but let's see. Noir. Hmm. Woody. Vanilla does smell like a candle. There's a leathery component to it. Also not horrible. Let me see if there's anything. Okay, the box has Noir blends black cardamom, smoky vanilla, and hint of musk. I get all of that. But I also get leather. I get leather, I get woods. 
Also, not too fucking bad. Hmm. Noir, huh? All right, we're like two out of three right now. That this is pretty decent. This noir one. Uh, let me try this. Let me try this joint on skin real quick, just to get a skin vibe off of this one. It's a little interesting. I kind of don't hate this. There's a lot of candle characteristic in this fragrance, but it's not terrible. Again, for thirty bucks, I feel like it has more character than some of the Century Twenty One finds that you might potentially find. So I would also put this in the category of like a six one. Not too bad. The musk here is a little weird when it dries down, but it's not horrible. I'll still keep it at the six one. And last and certainly not least, I'm excited about this one, the Leather and Brandy. I'm hoping that this one's gonna be a hit like the coffee and whiskey. So far, coffee and whiskey is definitely the best one, but this might be the one to blow it out of the water. Leather and brandy. Although, realistically, I'm not a brandy drinker. I don't love brandy. If you make like some sort of sangria or something, you sprinkle a little bit of brandy in there or use it as a, you know, like a little dessert cocktail, sure, but brandy on itself, not what I expected. You do get the brandy liqueur kind of vibe. There is a cherry kind of note. Just stab myself in the eye. Cherry kind of note here. Slightly tart. Smoky, you get a little bit of that booze factor, but you get it as far as the sweetness and that cherry liqueur kind of vibe, like a kind of like a dessert that they're about to light on fire. There's a bit of spiciness, not what I expected. I expected to get that same kind of visceral reaction from the coffee and whiskey, but it's not that. It's actually very comparable and kind of on that same space as the other two fragrances with a little bit more character. Let me try it on skin. I feel like it's playing too much to the mass appeal kind of, there's a Tropicana orange juice kind of citric vibe that opens up on this fragrance. It's like I said, a little bit of a fruit punch, cherry, tart, leathery kind of vibe. It's not bad, it's better on skin for sure. All right, so these are very comparable. It doesn't blow me away like coffee and whiskey. Coffee and whiskey is definitely the best one out of this trio. Um, but leather and brandy would be a, a number two, and I would rate this like a 6-3. So we got this at a 6-3. I gave Noir, I think, a 6-1, and Mineral and Sea Salt a solid 6. My ratings are like aggressive. My ratings are aggressive. Just think of like uh, Dave Portnoy in the pizza reviews. That's how I do it. Six doesn't mean that it's shit or anything like that. When I start getting into like the ones or whatever, then be worried. This is actually not bad. Considering like these three fragrances were like a hundred bucks total. Like it's not bad at all. Uh, I'm quite impressed by the Bath and Body Work line, to be honest with you. I've smelled other fragrances that are more expensive with less personality and less depth than these joints. They're really doing what they're supposed to do. They're mass appeal got sexy vibes, some are woody, some are spicy, some are vanillic, all have that versatility for them to be like a lotion or a candle or a lube, whatever Bath & Body Works sells. I think this is a pretty solid lineup for three fragrances for like a hundred bucks. I mean, you can't beat it, but coffee and whiskey, definitely number one. Let me know if there's other Bath & Body Works fragrances that I need to get my nose on and I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know who it is, biggest in the game, Smooches. Who's best? Who's best? One of them's gonna pass the test. Who For the fly gun holder, money folder, roller, roller, star tag when it's time to call back. For the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay gets a game, but he don't play. Hey. For all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse suite on top of my mom's crib. Hey. It's long since you never get in. It's long since you would think that you would. <laughs>